We are here for the final nine of the 2023 Main State Championships presented by High Roller Lobster Company and elevated by Thought Space Athletics. Welcome, everyone. My name is Chris German. Along beside me, we have Derek Skoll. And this is it, man. This is the final nine. We've been watching some amazing golf up here in Maine. Can't wait. Yeah, like I said, in the front nine and probably every video thus far, I've been really enjoying being a part of this event. Again, it's the first time that Gatekeeper has been in the state of Maine. So really excited to be a part of this and hoping to continue working with the club for the future. Yeah, Paul Kranz in the lead right now, the only one to not take a blemish in the front nine. So he's holding that lead strong. So we're going to move into hole 10, a 625 foot par four. Pretty open. We do have OV on the right to contend with. Um, good two shot open hole for these guys. The OV on the right really makes it that you can't get too aggressive. Yeah, and I like that the basket is on the mound, so it adds your, you know, with your approach shot, it adds a lot more to think about in terms of your angle control and how you want to just nestle onto that hill. Yeah, that's pretty much the theme of this course is putting these baskets at really good locations that just creates... Uh, things to think about and I would say unexpected things could happen due to angles and stuff like that and I just love when baskets are pitched up on hills or have hills on the back side of the greens and... definitely a little high for Clint it's going to cause it to carry further left than he'd wish And we have David Fleck here. He strung together a decent amount of birdies in the front nine. He did take that bogey on eight, unfortunately. Come on, man. Jesus. Paul just making it look easy. Should have a tap in three. Clint putting that right in the bullseye, making it look easy. And overall, this hole did come in pretty easy. About a quarter stroke under par. So these lead car guys definitely want to get their birdies here. Eli is going to have a tester for his birdie look. I like this American flag on this basket here. It waves uh, majestically. I don't know. It just looks good on the basket. Well, it's placed high enough to really be able to give yourself uh, a good wind read from the tee as well. There you go. As you can good. see, Eli not testing with any wind as that flag is relatively still. Yeah, good comebacker there after the birdie miss. And everyone else... Bullseye are better, basically. Or I guess just bullseye. If it was better, it would be in the basket. <laughs> Ball keeping up with the birdies as well just only two strokes off hole 11 530 foot we have ob on the right um, the play really is to land in the landing zone kind of over to the left uh, of that kind of bushed tree in the middle and then you get you have a clean hyzer into the green from over there yeah, 530 feet and it being downhill, the 
big power players can really launch one down here to give themselves, I would say, a, a good eagle look. Just didn't flip up as much as he wanted, probably, but still good. You're kind of aiming for that tree down there. And if you can really connect on one and it gets past the tree, then you can give yourself a good putt. Yeah, and right of that tree is by no means bad. You're just playing a little more risky with that OB there in uh, danger of turning something over, adding a stroke to your hole. Also sets up for a forehand shot for the righty, I would say, there. As Eli is able to get up inside the circle. Pretty textbook there from David. Yeah, not really too much of a dangerous green here. That's why you can really give it a good bid. If Clint was maybe 50 feet closer, he could really give this a, an eagle look. I think he's even doing it there. <laughs> But everyone well within 20 feet as this came in as the easiest hole on the day 0. 0.72 under par so wow. three quarters of a stroke under par here a lot of birdies 69 birdies and one eagle so shout out to Miles Sayer for the eagle Yeah, overall, pretty pretty easy for the guys. I would say as the competition gets better, maybe something they can do if they have the room is just push this basket back a little bit, make that second shot more technical into the woods. So we're going to move into hole 12, 492 foot par four. This one, we have a dog leg right. If you get too, basically you want to follow the path here. Uh, if you get too far left, you can get pinched behind those trees we just saw. Uh, then your second shot should be a, Based on where you land, could be a hyzer, could be a forehand. But this first shot is just a real tight, almost like a sawed off left to right shot. Yeah, I was going to say, I really like this hole because it makes you play shorter off the tee for your optimal next shot. Um, so as a righty forehand, um, committing to the hyzer angle, letting the road kind of skip it up a little bit more. Yeah, like Clint's look there, much better look than what Paul's probably going to have. Paul might have like a interesting little flex forehand kind of Annie shot or something. Uh, it's real easy to push it too far. Where that's exactly what I was talking about. Oh, Eli's going to get caught up early. Hole's not too, too far in terms of distance, so as long as he stays clean here, he should be able to bite off a lot of the hole. Turns that one over, though. That marshy oh, footing... Definitely yeah. played played uh, to that outcome. And I think we saw some of that in round one as well. I think Matt had some struggles there. Uh, so it does look like footing does come into play here. Oh, Paul's so far past it that he's got to go to the left of the trees. Yeah. And launches it past the basket. Oh, 
Oh, wow. Clint yeah. actually went so far that he was on the other side of the trees. I was not expecting that. Yeah. Nice safe play from Elijah. Should be able to save his par after hitting early there. As Paul is putting for birdie. It's a no-go on that one, but I really like the creativity to just, hey, I'm too far to the left. I can't even get around this tree. Let me just find my own way. Man, that's tough for Clint there. Yeah, big clock. Very unfortunate as Paul saves his par. This is David for birdie. That is another turkey for him. He is really putting together a good round. Seven down through 12. Yeah, and any time that we have a newcomer on to the coverage, when we see them shooting like that, that, that definitely warms my heart. I really appreciate, uh, you know, people being able to feel comfortable enough to, you Hold know, on, carry on a game like that. Okay. Hole 13, 406 foot par three. Another example of following the road. Uh, you're gonna wanna keep it pretty much level off the tee. Let the downward slope help a little bit. You don't wanna go too high as you're gonna get caught up in the branches. There's some guy gatekeeping the basket up there. Wow, that was a great shot from David. And took uh, what I was saying about following the road, road very literal. Yeah, get up there. Oh, just a little higher, and that would have been very good. Elijah, he strung together a string of pars here, and it looks like he will be scrambling for another one. He gets caught up early. Oh, yeah. Great shot. Yeah, this hole's so tough. Even with that, he still has a, a tough look for, for birdie. Elijah leaving it a little short on his scramble. Paul from down in the ditch didn't really have a follow through. David with the pitch up and Clint here from circle two. 
only one with a true birdie look here. Oh, you could tell he wanted that. Oh, no. Oh, man. You hate to see it, folks. Yeah. Happens to all of us. Oh, gives it such wow. a good bid there for the bogey. Oh, man. That was cheeky. I liked it. <laughs> I don't think he did. <laughs> As this hole came in 0.26 over par, so very challenging. And for the second round of this tournament, zero birdies on this hole. So Clint right there when he just tickled that chain, kissed it, that would have been the only birdie on the tournament on this hole. I think it's a fair hole. It's just a very tough hole. Yeah. Move into hole 14, a 300-foot par 3. With this gap that gets a little tight there when we go over this little hump, and then we're going to have a slightly fading green here, or slightly fading fairway to the left. Relatively flat green. I'd say this sets up for a pretty good flex shot for the righty. Right. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and David does just that. So he's going to continue putting green on his scorecard here. Boy, that was overstable. Just needs to hit a house. Gets stopped up. He's going to have a circle two vid there for the birdie. these last trees here and this is going to be great even with those trees should be good yeah paul, yeah, paul. Yeah, good great idea. shot good recovery from paul yeah good scramble clint needs this putt here to keep pace to even try to win this thing yeah, <laughs> he does Clutch putt from the knee. Sick. Nice and low. Yeah, great putt from him. A lot of spin on it. As that brings it to two strokes, and David parked here. I mean, two-stroke game with four holes to play. I mean, anything can happen here in these woods. Really great to see a birdie coming from Elijah after the unfortunate roll away from the last hole. Yeah, good bounce back stat there. David now eight down through 14, making a push here. Hole 15, 357, par 3. Um, really, you just want to have standard hyzer, kind of land near where the path is right about now and let it kick, or I'm sorry, flare over to the left, closer to the green. You want to play a little shorter because if you overthrow it, downward slope. Yes. Yeah, this brings yeah. those slopey greens back into play.
So not a terrible outcome considering, but that was uh, just not quite far enough before it started its fade. And that's just a little too straight. Yeah, flipped up too much on him. Yeah, with the angle here, you gotta ha you gotta throw it on hyzer, but have enough for it to still give a flare at the end, but get around that last tree there. So it's definitely a technical shot here. It's not, and this is looking. That's it. Great. <laughs> that is the shot right there. If you can do that, you are taking strokes from the field. That was a lovely forehand there from David. Same with Elijah. Love me some standstill forehands. And Clint's going to need the lay up there. That's winner mentality right there. He is taking a stroke on the whole card after just losing a stroke on the whole card. So that's how champions are made there. Get those strokes back that you lost. As he was one of eight birdies on this hole, coming in at a quarter stroke over par. stretch as we move into hole 16 546 foot par 4 a lot of trees to contend with here you got to get through this very tight gap it's probably only about 10 feet wide and you have this little dog leg here and a lot more guardian trees that are almost arm distance apart so a couple different lines to get there i would say just kind of have to find yours Relatively speaking, that was about as good of uh, an outcome as you could have gotten, aside from sneaking all the way through. That is a great shot from David. Early and low from Clint, not the best kick. He's going to be scrambling there. Try to get his par. And at this point, second place is three back with three to play. And David and Clint are neck and neck with one another. So at the very least, they're keeping themselves honest with each other. We do have that Mando there. Did not so mention I, that in the whole. I preview. did. Yeah, I did speak to tournament staff, and it looks like those are actually just directional pads, not playing as mandatories. Oh, okay. Um, I think there was some confusion between some of the players, um, as that's where I heard that from. Was this the one that we were talking about being uh, you missed the Mando, you throw from where you were or something? Correct, yeah. Yeah. So I have since been corrected. Although I do kind of like the idea of <laughs> what we thought it was. <laughs> yeah, seriously. David's going to put himself in the circle too. A 
Nostalgia for Birdie. Oh. What do I have to do? And Paul from Birdie has this one tree kind of in the way. He's going to have to go down to a knee. But we've seen how that outcome is in previous rounds. Yeah. Paul from Circle 2. Oh, <laughs> Strap oh. <on> putt. <laughs> Count it. I mean, that right there secures the win for the kid, I think. Man, such a great putting stroke. And it showed in the rounds that we saw in rounds two and three. I mean, this he's made so many putts from circle two this week. And I think something else to note is that Paul's composure is something that I find very impressive. Um, even with some missteps here and there, it is really easy to let that run away um, from you. So being able to recollect yourself, save those pars, that's what makes or breaks your round. Oh, yeah, he's cold-blooded. I mean, he has the makings for a champion. He's got all the talent. He's got the composure. Just now experiencing time. All right, folks, hole 17, 358 foot par three. Uh, as you can see, following the path yet again, tight, tight gap. Um, you're gonna want a hard swing to the left to leave yourself an opening there um, as the clean hyzer, I wouldn't really say is there. Paul making good work of this fairway. But like I was saying, you know, even the hyzer, you're gonna you're gonna contend to one or two trees there at the end of its flight. David electing yes. to go the more forward gap. Yeah, it's really hard to reach the basket on this hole, and that's really the theme of this course. I mean, even only just coming in at 358, I mean, we saw one earlier that was 360, I think, as well, and it's really hard for these guys to reach these pins. Yeah, where I think what we saw Clint do, where you're playing it a little lower, having a level f skip so that it follows the path, whereas we see Eli just navigate towards the right, I'm sorry, to the left, finding himself up there. Yeah, a little flexy as David. Slowing down here, he's got a long look for par. So him and Clint still going neck and neck. Clint with the upper hand now, the drop in par. Can't count Paul out from this distance. I think maybe he his his angle of release was a little too much, so it didn't have uh, the fight. Come on. Mm. Like that. Great shot there from Eli, right under the basket. Big putt here for David. Oh. oh. And here we are again with, you know, uneven footing. So it's really something that you have to think about with every step here on this course. Yeah. Nice to see some gallery members out there this hole came in as the hardest hole 0.47 over par so playing almost like a par four there were zero birdies on the day on this hole and i'm sure that we're going to see that change over time um, as they get more touring players through it people figuring out the course um, but it's good to see that stat that there's two holes birdie -less. We're going to move into hole 18, the final hole of this tournament. 547 foot par four. A lot of trees to contend with here, but it's really just throw it straight. Keep it straight the whole way down this road. And if you can do that, you can find yourself getting a birdie here. Yeah, in my gap. opinion. Oh, sorry. No, you go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, in my opinion, a really great finishing hole. 
Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, Kranz. Yeah, yeah the I, gap like, the get, the, I like it. <laughs> oh, are you going to say contender? that you like the flex line too? I was. I was going to say you have the flex line and then you have that gap right up the gut. Uh, the flex line definitely being the bigger gap. Yeah. Where if you're going the straight straight gap, that's going to be more maybe placement without potentially leaking left. Oh my God. Because if you don't commit to that turnover, you don't want to miss left. You're not going to have anything coming out of there. Yeah, left is definitely a no-go zone. It's pretty dark over there as well, so it looks heavily wooded. And so this, this also is tracking towards the left. This also doesn't read on camera and Elijah got a little lucky there. He could have been much further left. He might have uh, a little bit of space for a scramble forehand maybe. David going with that smaller gap and fortunate with a tree kick pushing him back closer to the fairway. But it uh, what I was going to say is it didn't read on the tee, but it had just started raining. So surprise, surprise, we're met with wet conditions again here in the Northeast. Hey, what a way to finish it, you know? It's been the gatekeeper theme and really the theme on, the theme on tour all year. Is I don't think we've ever experienced so much weather in our life oh, out on tour, is. having toured for over five years now, or for about five years. It's insane. Yeah, and I want to give a big shout out to the person on staff that came in clutch uh, and lended me their umbrella as we did not get any call for rain and I got stuck out in it. Um, so I was able to utilize an umbrella, stay dry as we bring in the final steps of this tournament. Man, that was such a good shot there from Eli. You said it, that step out flex forehand and he executed. All the formality here yeah. for Paul. And how how much more clean could you get? Last ditch effort there from David. Eli's and good to see him finish with a birdie and under par. He had a roller coaster round, uh, but it was awesome to see him continue to fight and battle. David with the seven down, he put up a very solid round as well today. He was definitely pushing hard. But that was the man of the, the tournament, Mr. Paul Clans. 24 Ladies under. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2023 Main States Disc Golf Championship, sponsored by High Roller Lobster, Thought Space Athletics, Paul Cram. Shout out to these trophies as well. Yeah, that is dope. That's really cool. And Dave, Paul, I mean, these guys have so much skill. It's hey, exciting to see these Northeasterners, these Northeastern players uh, continue to play, and we're starting to see them on tour more and more. Yeah. yeah, and really, really happy to see the camaraderie there of all congratulating Paul. He was, at, you know, he had the fortune of playing with some good buddies and people he's been around for a while here in the New England area. So we take a look at this final scoreboard. Paul with the bogey free final round eight down, really put it together. Clint able to hold off. Luke Sampson, Marky Chap, some familiar names. Man, this has been such a fun tournament. I agree. Yeah. And uh, I hope everybody enjoyed watching just as much as we did. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>